Dr. Thomas Mantham IV, I'm speaking about judgment by the word of the Lord. Kind of an unusual, rare topic, but the Holy Ghost, who's my boss, has been on me for the last two days to deal with this. It's part of doctrine. It's part of the doctrine of scripture, of life, of reality, of the Bible, of kingdom. And let's get into it. I'm going to do a very quick uh, synopsis, a little uh, pre, pre, you know, preamble synopsis of this to explain a few things and reference it from the Bible. The title of this, if I leave it like that, is a very interesting one. The judgment of God can act as an assassin. That's a big word. I even looked it up and I didn't like the definitions. Don't look up the word assassin. Well, see now, do this, uh, what's this psychological trickery? You tell someone not to do something, they'll do it. I'm telling you, don't, don't. It's not good. The definitions for the word assassin are horrible. 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 Bad. I saw things in there, I was like, what? Things that you, you wouldn't even normally think about. But the need for this is paramount because some evil forces need to be snuffed out. Some things are not going to get snuffed out in the, in the realm of the Antichrist because we won't be here. In the realm of the Armageddon and the Tribulation and, you know, or in heaven, you know, we'll just be like, hoo hoo, I'm okay, you know, you're okay, I'm okay, you're okay. No problemo. Uh, then it won't even be relevant. In fact, you'll forget about everything. In fact, God wants us to forget about everything now. Hello, everyone's coming on. I see you there. Blessings on you. The Lord is really going to deal with more people in the days to come. Not that He hasn't already. But something's coming down the pipeline from heaven. It's not even a pipe, it's an open downpour of like a waterfall, a fire. I can see it in a vision, you know. Wow. This is my work, folks. In a time when it's the weather's horrible, everything's untoward and I said I, I've got well, I'm, I'm here I'm somewhere right now I'm about to leave I said I have to do this now before I step a moment further because it's necessary to speak it as God's prophet some things you cannot coexist with some issues you're not supposed to accept and tolerate in your world. Some things you're supposed to just snuff. Say a big amen. I mean, just absolutely annihilate and destroy and get rid of them. Including some of God's enemies. How many times in the scripture, if I were to take time to open the word and let's go paging through the Bible, let's walk through the Bible with our fingers. He teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Let's take our fingers and, you know, tiptoe through the two lips. No, that's this old song by Tiny Tim. That was a funny guy. Uh, no, everything's not tiptoeing through the two lips, as you've seen in life. Let's, let's walk through the Bible and talk about God's enemies and our enemies. There's so much there. Now, I want to make a quick reference by verbal analysis. About the guys in the Bible. Let's look at Haman who wanted to destroy Mordecai. And he hung. Let's look at Absalom who wanted to undermine his father's kingdom and he hung on the tree. Let's look at Judas, he hung. Hung himself. What is all this hang up? Look at uh, 
Korah who wanted to oppose Moses and the earth opened up and swallowed them alive. Let's look at uh, Achan in the camp of Joshua. He stole. And he was taken out and stoned, him and his people. Brutal. Someone said, what does that relate to today? Ah, uh, yeah, it does, because it's a principle in the scripture. Exodus 22 talks about what God thinks about a thief. Take time to read Exodus 22. I'm sure many people listening to me right now have never even known that scripture was there. That passage of scripture of what God thinks about a thief, what should happen to a thief. People that steal, kill, and destroy. Scripture says they often don't deserve to live. Look at Isaiah 41, 11. It says those that hate you will become ashamed and disgraced. They'll even become as nothing. And if they want to strive with you, keep fighting you, they'll even perish. By, who, by how? By the hand of the Lord. God can arrange very interesting events. He said in uh, Romans 12 somewhere, toward the, in the 20s, you can look at the passage of Scripture says, there that says, uh, Vengeance is mine, say the Lord, I will repay. I will judge. And God said in, uh, in his word that the psalmist wrote and it became uh, doctrine, became logo scripture. The righteous shall flourish, but the evil will be cut off and cut, cut down and cut off. Solomon in Proverbs said there's wise and there's foolish. There's wise people and there's foolish people. So choose where you're going to go. Wisdom, the spirit of wisdom said in Proverbs 8, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, right? It says in one uh, particular passage. But in the 8th chapter of Proverbs, he says, I was with the Lord in the beginning. Now, wisdom is likened unto a she, a her, in the female uh, pronoun. I don't know why. But women are, are brilliant, you know. Men have their own ways that are good, but women are very, very uh, multifaceted, brilliant, detail-oriented, you know. And we need that, to say the least. So wisdom was likened unto a, a, the female... Uh, I'm trying to say it in a way. Gender, I don't even want to use the word pronoun. Pro, gender, you know, the female part of it, yeah? She, 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 Solomon said. Wisdom, her, her, her. Her value is greater than precious stones and rubies and diamonds and precious gems. Her, her, her. It didn't say his. The Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, was like the him. The Holy Ghost is never likened to as a woman, uh, as a female part of it, unless he's talking about the El Shaddai, the many-breasted one, you know, the one who'll be like a nursing mother. Jesus even said, I was like, a, like the mother hen who was brooding over her, her chicks, but they wouldn't come, you know. That's a very funny analogy, but Jesus was a real man. Say amen. The Holy Ghost is in the, the masculine. Father God is like in the male thing. In these days, people even want to try to change that around. They want to try to make other versions of the Bible. I'm sure before the end comes of the age, uh, evildoers will do a lot of stupid things. But you know what? We don't need to wait to the other side and just think, well, God, will, you know, remember the scripture about the wheat and the tares. Let them all grow and the angels will come and sort it all out. <clears throat> in other words, you don't have to be involved in any aggressive act of war to uh, change things. That's not right. The word of the Lord in the realm of judgment can be like an assassin. I, I want to prophesy based on what the Holy Spirit told me to say. And I, many cultures and societies and nations, no one would talk like this. I, I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm, I mean by that. You would, you would know too. I told this one operative from the government. <laughs> Great man is helping me with some great things. Uh, really, really great guy. And I said, uh, I, I, I was talking about some events that were really evil. And, you know, it was really like going on and on about it. 
this was yesterday. And uh, we had a meeting and, uh, and I said, now, I, I feel this word in my spirit been coming to me like, you know, yesterday and the day before. And then today also again, it wouldn't leave me. I, you know, not that I wanted to shake it, but it wouldn't leave my, my mind and my heart. about God's judgment could be like an assassin. I said, I said to him, I said, who would have the guts or the, you know, you, you know what, to talk about that? He's like, <laughs> nobody, nobody, nobody. What pastor would speak about it, you know? Well, I'm even doing this on Saturday because on Sunday I may talk more on this or I may not. And because of the evil dust in the air, I'm getting caught up again. But don't worry, one day, Soon I'll just be in the perfect uh, environment where there's none of that. I believe for that. Let, let, me, let me tell you the premise, the foundational point of why I'm teaching on this, what I feel in my own mind and spirit, and even for myself, that ultimately we have a great, a great progressive life. You know, life, let me tell you, life is about pleasure. It's about purpose. It's about productivity. Not about pain. And... Uh, you know, uh, persecution and trouble, prolonged uh, suffering. <coughs> it's about progress, progression, productivity, forward moving. That's a good life. And doing it all with pleasure. Job 36, 11 says, you, if you serve the Lord correctly, well, you'll spend your days and your life in prosperity and pleasure. And then God said in the same two words in Psalm 35, 27, he says he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. His servant is anyone who serves him. I was just reading a scripture that talked about those who fear the Lord, and I, I, I like a paraphrased uh, way of saying it a little bit who reverence, because fear, we just think about being afraid of something, but reverence is respect. Let me tell you something else is gonna to happen to a lot of people, it already has happened, by the way. This has already happened in big ways. People that don't show honor and reverence for the anointing uh, and God and what he's doing, they get left behind. And then us, uh, his servants, make mental notes about people. When they had an opportunity to do something, they dropped the ball. Or they didn't. He, 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 someone could ask, well, does a, person, does a person have to be responsible to, like, discern everything? And, and be, like, a, par, a big part of it? Well, I would say yes. If they're smart and they're going to get blessed. If they just want to carry on with their own thing, of course not. And then you got to say, who cares? Like certain people, you know, have opportunities for certain things and they don't take it correctly. <coughs> well, God will pipe, bypass them and move right along. And sometimes the servant of the Lord will have to say, you know, I ain't waiting. I ain't waiting on that. I'm not waiting on that. So there's certain, several things God's dealing with, you know, judging like dishonor, disrespect, the callous attitude, but also evildoers. People that have hurt good things and destroyed movements and caused uh, un insurmountable, even almost unfathomable, uh, uh, uncountable damage to movements and blessings in people. They are devils, even though some stand in the church and pontificate upon themselves like their leaders <coughs> in the church. But they're leaders for the devil. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. They're hirelings. They're like heathens. They're like, uh, mark those that cause division among you and avoid them and have no company with them. For these serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. That's talking to church people. That's talking to leaders. Romans 16, 17. Now, when he said in Matthew 7, uh, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Who's he talking to? I don't know you. And, I, and the scary thing is I never did. Oh, can you imagine? 
I think there's some there's a, there's a space in between there that someone <coughs> might have been doing something, but they're just so evil along the way, and the way they ended up. He says, he says, it's like I never knew you. I, I, I question that a little bit. I say, Lord, what about somebody that may have had some hope or now they're just in a totally bad place, you know? Was it always that you never knew them or you don't know them or you want to say it as if you never did? I, I think there's a little bit of it. Anyway, we'll talk more with the Lord about that. But clearly scripture said, my official position is, you're not mine. That's not talking to sinners. That's talking to church people. Sinners don't cast out devils, preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick. Cast out devils and preach in his name, in Jesus' name. Sinners don't do that. You'd have to be absolutely belligerently stupid as a human to try to even not know that, to think that that's just talking to everybody. Oh, that could be other people. No, it can't be. Just think. Scripture should never supersede thinking. Scripture should always make you think. Preaching and teaching should always make you think and ponder and meditate and get more revelation about reality. And about what about God's uh, <coughs> perspective in thinking about things? Always, not just like you hear it and you don't think about it. Do we not cast out devils in your name? Cast out devils. Who in sin does that? Preach gospel. Preach in your name. Who does that? Lay hands on the sick church stuff that is 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 church those are church things only preachers do those preachers do those things only even a lay person would never have enough influence with their own few people around them family friends or whatever to become like a problem to a lot of people It's like one person way over here, like let's say they're just one person, they do a few things and they're not right. Jesus wouldn't even make a big deal about it. He wouldn't make a, a doctrinal statement in the scripture for just an individual case. Can you see that? But when it's a big uh, epidemic, pandemic, pandemic in the church, hey, Now, you have an issue to deal with. So I don't want to wait till later. This is part of the reason why I'm saying this. We're going to deal with it now. Say amen. The assassination of some evils needs to happen. God's judgment can... God's judgment can make arrangements that will act as an assassin. I know that's a long, complicated title if I can use it as the theme. What I'm going to title this, I don't know. I'll get, I'll get a good title after I'm done. Maybe a shorter one. but <coughs> That's a statement I heard. God's judgment can act as an assassin. And if you think that some people need to walk the earth and continue in their evil, you're wrong. I could, I could go back very painfully in my mind to think about, recollect things where I let people live. I let people continue. And they just did so much damage to things, but they should have been cut off before. Now, we don't wait a minute. Now, in, in the maturity, maturity realm of being on a on assignment in very untoward places where people are just total, total trash uh, too many times. 
too many people are, I'd say. A lot of good people, but a lot of bad people. And you see that pattern, you see that thing going on, now you just, pew, you slice it and dice it before it gets a chance to blink twice. I can help you if you listen to me. If you got someone that's acting, you know that the, you discern that they're evil already. Kick them out no matter how much they cry or cause you a trouble uh, in, the, in the process of that because later on they'll cause more trouble. If it's going to be weird later, it's weird now. Kill it now. God told uh, Saul to kill all these certain people. He didn't. And the Lord took the kingdom from him because he was so mad at his disobedience. Considered it like re rebellion, pr pr pride and arrogance. and Thinking he can second guess the whole thing when God gave a clear instruction. Some of those people reproduced and brought offspring even till today. Even the children of Ishmael and even the children of that, those people that God told Saul to, to, cut, to cut down. God thought so much about evil, he, he, he drowned the earth. That's not nice, is it? And left eight people alive, Noah and his descendants and all the animals. No, not his descendants, I mean his immediate family. Maybe his kids and his wife and a relative or two. Eight people, the scripture says. Eight out of millions of people on the earth. Now today there's almost eight billion people on the planet Earth. If you think like someone wants to have an evil, like uh, nefarious agenda of, of, of uh, genocidal uh, population reduction, I saw one guy, a billionaire, a famous guy, and he went on this thing about, oh, this, you know, child's death or whatever. And then he went right over into his nefarious promoting, like, vaccines. But we know the vaccines that went around this last time, they were, had another, had another agenda to them. And he's all in that. It seemed good, but it wasn't, it was, you know, there's something wrong in there. There's a worm in the apple. But I'd say if you want to talk about population reduction, let's get, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little facetious here and kidding around, but it's not really that funny. But let me say it in a joking way, you know. Uh, if you want to do population reduction, get rid of some of the evil people that are causing trouble. I have things going on right now I can't talk about, very top secret, very high intelligence going on right now, even today, is Saturday, tonight, right now, this evening. Some things are going on in the realm of God's judgment on some evil, 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 evil people. And uh, that's what I'll say about that. And it's very heavy and very, very, uh, it's a very weighty matter. So I, I felt the Holy Ghost. He just kept telling me to <clears throat> go into this. Said some people need to be offed. Some people need to be. They need to disappear. Some people have done such horrible things that millions of people are suffering because of a lack of something they never got because it was cut at the source. And a lot of it has to do in the church. Even some. Big churches that were big, and now look, they've become as nothing. Part of it might have been the enemy fighting the whole thing, but part of it was them and their own evil. Very sad. And it's not right. So the Lord's going to have his way. He's bringing his judgment. I've seen it in the last few days. It's even happened uh, on the, on, in big ways. You know? We see certain things happen. Certain people getting put out of the way, putting off, put, put off the scene. It's their evil agenda. God's not going to tolerate it. And he has his prophet here, Dr. TM4. 
and I hope some others. I don't know. I don't really know uh, anybody. Uh, it's like me, but that's okay. I don't mind being the man for the job. God's called me, put His hand upon me. I'm unique, and I got a, a very unique assignment, a very fierce and powerful assignment. I remember one time in America, the Lord told me to dethrone a certain political candidate. They are dethroned forever. They lost the election and they never have come back and they can never run for office again. We put them down. I could tell you the name and it would ring like bells in the, like everybody knows the name. Extraordinarily famous person. And in another setting now, extraordinarily famous person, famous people with their nefarious selves and agendas. God's not having it. And the judgment that God can, can, can let fall and that he arranges certain things that can become like an assassin to somebody. Again, the word assassin is a big word. It really means like the end of it, but it could be like a, an assassination of the agenda. You know, forward moving or something evil. God wants to kill it all. Now my underlying thought in a lot of this is we don't need to wait till later to hope for the best. Hope for a better tomorrow. Sounds like a nice religious jargon, doesn't it? Sound like that, that could be like a, a theme song, a theme title for some uh, Christian, uh, something on a Christian television network. Welcome to the program. Hope for a better tomorrow. Yes, we hope. Hope, hope is not going to change everything. Faith and action and the right mindset is going to change things. If you don't believe God can judge anybody and everything is mercy and you know, maybe hope that they'll repent and, oh, it's okay that they did that and all that, then you, you, you're not going to change anything. And unfortunately, a lot of, a lot of I got to say it, a lot of church people are like that. I run into them all the time. They have these little slogans in their cultural, church cultural well, a reality, uh, you know, scheme in some place, particular place. I go, uh, what about God's mercy? What about it? God's mercy is for the, for the righteous. Does it have to be for the evildoers? No. If God chooses to, that's his business. But we don't need to tolerate that garbage. We need to get them out of the way. And judgment can also come to get evil out of the way. Say a big amen and hallelujah to that. Because that's what, that's the purpose, that's, that's the agenda. I mean, that's what needs to happen. So, we don't need to leave things alone. And then they're like, oh, can't they repent? Well, what if they, people say this stupid stuff to me all the time. I tell them, I, I tell them to hush up. I like, I admonish them. I'm like, what are you telling me that for? It's not my business. Well, they're going to call you one day and apologize. So what if they called you and repented? Are you, are you nuts? Is that your thought? Your thought should be, hey, everything they did that's evil, <clears throat> God needs to deal with it and reckon with it and crush it and put it down. What do you think about that, prophet? Am I thinking right? I'm like, that's it. Now you're on to it. Now, like, well, what if they called you on the phone and said sorry? What does that take back? Does that put back everything that was destroyed and hurt? It doesn't. And they don't deserve the absolution. If they get it some other way, that's their business. I have a friend, he says something really rude. An evangelist in America says something that sounds really rude. But he's really right. Someone said, you believe in God. He said, I don't just believe in God. I know God and I work according to his will. The devil believes in God and trembles. Somebody came along saying, well, people think he doesn't believe in God. Yeah, because he's so evil in his ways and his policies and stuff he, he does. And then I shouted back at the thing like, we don't care if you say you believe in God. That's your own problem. The devil also believes in God. You think you're going to hoodwink us? Think, oh, yeah, you really believe in God and that's going to get somebody's sympathy for you? You buffoon. Get out of the way and get off the stage. And he's been put off the stage. Let me tell you right now, this particular one has been unstaged. You better thank God for this prophet of God here that speaks to you right now. 
I've seen famous prophets, you know, that people like, you know, take a liking to. They quote my stuff. Things I said years ago, <coughs> saying it now, when people hear it, they go, ooh. I'm like, ooh, I said that eight, ten years ago. I was teaching on that more than a decade ago. More than. Sorry, the air is really bad here. So God has me on the edge, you know. Can't get rid of it, you know. It's just like you breathe in all this dust and pollution and cold air. I was in paradise last week. This week, um, maybe I'm back in Hades. Different place. So... God is tired, tired of people putting up with stuff. He's going to come down and get, get busy. He's coming down and getting busy. He's getting his own elect. He doesn't need everybody. He needs someone like me <clears throat> and maybe some others, few others, that can really deal with stuff to chop evil to pieces. So something about God can give you like a prophetic nature. You're like a warrior, and you don't feel bad about everything that happens, it seems, untoward especially to evildoers, to good people you feel bad. When I see evildoing being done to, like to victimize a good person, it infuriates me. I feel compassion for them, I weep tears over them, I look at people, I just feel so much compassion. People that are sick, people that get hurt, uh, that are sick by the devil, or people that, um, uh, get victimized by other people that are evil. My. God, <clears throat> when you see people that are judged, and people go, oh, oh, look at that. They deserved it. Someone that goes down the path of evil to demoralize, crush, hurt, steal, rip off, kill, steal, and destroy from good people and movements and things and operations of things and even things for the kingdom of God, especially. They deserve what they get because they chose that path. Today, as I speak, Saturday, this, this night, some things are being reckoned with. I just say that as a reference of reality, as a testimony. I can't say more. Right now, tonight, today. Got the updates this afternoon, or the, early this evening. God is amazing. He told me, <clears throat> now he told me this. I haven't heard a lot of people speak things like this, but he told me. He said, I have not forgotten, my son, the evil that has come against you and others, and I will trace it all down. I'll trace them, and I'll, I'll follow it up, and not one of them that have done these things will escape my wrath. Thus saith the Lord. The Lord stood in front of me and said that. I was like, wow. When I wasn't thinking about it, I wasn't praying for it, I wasn't praying about it, I wasn't wishing for it, I wasn't hoping for it, I wasn't lamenting, I wasn't feeling bad, I wasn't complaining to anybody, I wasn't thinking, it wasn't in my mind. I was in a glorious realm of productivity and blessing and, and, and everything was great. And God came and just stood in front of me, unannounced, when I wasn't even thinking about it or expecting that and spoke that to me. In fact, he did it three times. Maybe four, I always say that, I've said this before, maybe four, I think maybe four, but I, I can recollect three times very strong, audibly, in a visitation. And one time he came to my house somewhere far away and I, I, was stand, I was in my office there and he just came and stood in front of me. He said, you saw him? Yeah, I did. The, pres the tangible presence of God. I'd imagine we would say the Holy Spirit himself in a person, a, in, the, in the form of a person, as he can manifest himself. And there he was. 
This one wasn't Jesus. Jesus has appeared to me many times. I've seen him. I could tell you how he looked. I could tell you his countenance, his eyes uh, color. His, sometimes so much fire in his eyes, you couldn't see really the color. But he has a beautiful, beautiful uh, eyes, beautiful, amazing countenance, skin tone, and hair, and majestic with the robes and everything. But this wasn't Jesus. It was it's the Holy Spirit. I, Because I couldn't really make out and tell you every detail about but I felt the power in front of me so strong, God was standing there. So surely it was the Holy Spirit. And he said that to me. So guess what? When you see it happening, don't be surprised. And a lot of people, so got the, they got their head somewhere, so far up somewhere, that they can't think about these things, and they just let evil go on. Everything is evil. Even the, the dust on the roads, even the, and the untoward reality of filth and pollution and what. Because some, <clears throat> somebody didn't deal with the things that cause all that, you know. Not just natural. You think it's natural? Look at America. America is not like that. You don't have piles of dust blowing everywhere from broken roads and filth and garbage thrown on the side. Somebody cleaned it. Somebody fixed it. Somebody paved it. Somebody put sidewalks. Someone had, there's a building somewhere. There's trees. There's what? Everything is landscape. Everything is laid out. You could go through a whole town. I'm thinking about this one place in a, a beautiful tropical place. And you drive through this one town. It's a very rich neighborhood. And they have all these pl flowers and plants and trees everywhere. Green grass and perfect asphalt roads. There's not a speck of dust in the air, man. You can open the windows, all you feel is the fresh tropical air coming in. And somewhere where I just was, because there's no traffic there, you go all the way down to right, you're right on the ocean, all you're getting is the natural air from the ocean, not all this other stuff. Lord, deliver me from this, and he will, I, he'll answer. This is absolutely pathetic. The way people carry on, Then there's chances for things to go forward. Movements in so many ways and then people are jealous and hateful and hurtful and they want to destroy. <coughs> and um, because of that, so many things don't get done. So many things get aborted and uprooted. You think that's okay? Not on your life. And the Lord's going to come like an assassin. Mark my words. It's not a good word, but it's uh, annihilation and destruction of that which causes destruction. We are the destroyers of the destroyer. The anointing is a destruction, is a destroyer of the yoke of, of evil. And the Lord wants to put his hand upon people. in that way to pray these things. Dear friend of mine in Europe who I preach for, a very powerful man of God on the European continent. I just saw him, he was speaking somewhere and he was talking about warfare. And he said, well, there's the worship and the praise and the singing and the nice love melody and all that. And then when someone speaks to their, you know, family member or uh, husband and wife or whatever, and, you know, it's like a nice thing, you know, you're not in a warfare mode. He, said, well, well, he says, but when I deal with my enemies, I, my whole tone changes. And he began to raise his voice and shout in tongues and his voice changed. He went into a different realm. And the power of God began to move off the platform and everybody lifted their hands. I was like, yeah, now you got it. That's what, that's what will break. And I'm, that, I think that's one of the reasons why they invited him to speak in this conference. Because he brought that. He brought that element of it. And some people can't do it. I'm glad I can, too. You got to bring that element of it that we know we're dealing with evil forces that need to be dealt with. Say amen. So the judgment of God is surely coming. It's here. It's happened before. It's happening again. A resurgence of it, a new uh, movement of it is happening. Certain people are going to disappear. 
certain uh, uh, evil doers are going to just go off the scene in many ways, including the ultimate way. And, and it's just going to be like a whole shift <clears throat> and a change. And even systems are going to change. God's been wanting to do this for a long time. It's not like he wanted to, you know, come and talk about this like last night or last week or last month or even last year or even last decade. He's been wanting to do this for a long time. But he has to have the army of people that are going to uh, say, hey, enough is enough of this nonsense we're seeing. We, it must be changed. So the Lord is on it. This is, this, is the, this is a prophecy, okay? This whole thing I'm saying is a prophecy. The Lord is, is just saying he, he wants to release that. If you don't like it, whatever, man. Enjoy yourself. Tiptoe through the two lips. Like Tiny Tim, you know, he used to play that song. Very funny guy. Everything's not a walk in the park, as they say, or tiptoeing through the tulips. There's real evil to be dealt with. And people need to uh, deal with it accordingly, and not just leave it there. Again, it's not for the end, the end of the age where the angels come to sift out the wheat from the tares. It's, it's not just that. <coughs> it's a... Uh, It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a dealing of the right now through, through the elect, through the warring people. If you think like, oh, just, I just leave it, I ignore it, I overlook it, I just leave it. Oh yeah, they're bad, uh, that's how it is. And then they say things like uh, TIA or TI, whatever, this is, this is that, this is how it is here, that's just what they do. You, you talk like that, God will consider you like you're like an infidelish kind of person, infidel. You're not, you're, not a, you're not a promoter of the power of God. You're not a wielder of the sword. There's a ceremony com coming up on Tuesday. The one God had me prophesy. He spoke to me about so long ago. Finally, I released the word, you know, and, uh, and uh, about the Lord speaking that to me, and surely he'll be inaugurated on Tuesday. Today is Saturday. It's three days from now. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Third day from now. And uh, a sword is given, a sword from the old order to the new, the old commander in chief to the new one, a sword. What does that mean? That's the wielding of power and authority, even to defend the people, defend the constitution, defend the democracy. They're supposed to do that. They don't always do it, but we pray that more and more this democratic thing, this real movement thing, this awareness and consciousness behavior that helps the people and the next generation and the whole society and the democratic system. Not democratic, because, you know, they, they, evildoers get in the democratic system and cause problems. I was saying to someone the other day, I wish some people had a little bit more power. Now, the wrong person, you don't want to give that to. But someone that really wants to bring some change, they need to be able to deal with, like, deep state, issues, deep-rooted issue, enemies, proponents of satanic agendas and demonic things, and they use the democratic process with loopholes to do it. Some of those maybe need to be shut up a little bit, but don't mistake that, for not in the wrong place. I cannot believe this air, it's freaking hell. It's so annoying. Idiot. Make this like this. I was fine. I really was. <sighs> I could feel all this in my in my lungs. Pollution. So the democratic system is, 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 can even be exploited by Satan. Can you believe that? Sometimes. Because the evildoers get in one side, they fight the other side, and they try to act like, you know, it's like checks and balance the system. And then meanwhile, they're, they're impeding progress. Because you have a righteous man over here, and they fight like hell, because they are full of hell, to stop the good that's being done. And they use the democratic system. It's a little bit deep now. They use the democratic system to do it. So the democratic system is better than a dictatorship. It's a step in the right direction, of course, but you've got to watch who's 
also involved in the democratic process. And you understand what I'm saying? So we need to have more power, and some certain people need to have more power, by God, of course, and by you know human uh, acceptance and the movement to deal with evil. Say amen. Not everything is for the end. Not everything is to be left alone. You know, let the Antichrist figure it out, and let the I don't know how you'd say. Uh, the angels come and figure it out. You know, don't, you, we shouldn't be, nobody should be lazy and talk like that. The work to destroy evil and work on that now is, is for us, the church. And what we allow gets allowed. What we bind gets bound. What we loose gets loosed. Don't ever forget it. Jesus said to Peter, I give you keys of the kingdom. So what are you, like a wimp or a warrior? This is powerful. This has to be another book. This is a doctrinal teaching right here the sword of the Lord to do what? to destroy evil now I gotta say something else the rapture of the church I am a real believer in it and of course we long for his appearing and like I said in Revelation 21 Maranatha come Lord Jesus we God has a special blessing for those who are longing for his appearing, you know, I, I do, but I have, we have so much more work to do. I have a dear friend in the ministry, a great man of God, great apostle, oh my, and I was, he came on very late in the night in my time zone, it was a di from a different time zone, and I just, I just, I just could not watch it, I had to watch the whole thing. And I gave him two hours of my time to watch it. It was, it was worthwhile. But he said something when he started thinking about the coming of the Lord. Because an evangelist friend called him and asked him from another, uh, way on the other side of the world, another continent far away. He said, is this the end of days? He said, well, no. The, end, the Lord said the end is not yet. But he started to think, well, and then, so, and then he was preaching somewhere. And then when the whole lockdown thing happened, the whole pandemic hit the world. And one man of God said to him, is this like the beginning of the end? Is this the beginning of the tribulation? He says, no, it can't be the beginning of the tribulation because we're not going to be here for the tribulation. Because I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I say that. And I'm a great proponent of the rapture before the tribulation because you'd call that pre-tribulation, pre -trib, right? Pre-tribulation. -pre because, and it's provable by scripture, you know, there's no mid-trib, post-trib. Those are fallacies. Those are lies from religious idiots who, who want to suffer maybe. Maybe you want to be around for that. Help yourself, elect yourself. If you want to be one of the 144,000, uh, that's the last witnesses, and I don't know. You want to be around when they want to cut off your head just so you can uh, do a transaction. No, if you don't take the mark of the beast, which, which if you do, you lose your salvation, the scripture says. We don't want to be tempted. We don't want to be pushed to that, that wall. That you'd have to die or take the mark. We won't be here. And the, and the scripture says that uh, the, the judgment is coming against the wicked. Tribulation, Armageddon, okay, Wormwood, all of these different things, the Antichrist, the, the man of perdition, all of that ruling satanically is not for the righteous. We will be gone up with the Lord wherever he takes us. And then we'll come back. And then there'll be the millennial reign. And then he'll make a new heavens and a new earth. And um, so shall we ever be with the Lord, reigning forever. If you're faithful now, he'll give you power to rule over some five cities, some ten cities, some more. You ever think about that? Rulership, dominion, because you've exercised it here and now. We don't want to also get to heaven and be caught up with uh, with nothing to show for it. Now everybody has to be a soul winner because the only thing you can take when you leave is people. You might get a good house, a good car, even a yacht, even a plane, even a what, even uh, all kinds of 
material things. You could have more than one house. You could become very rich in this life. And I pray you do. Like for me. How it is. You know. I, 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 great. But you can't take that with you. The only thing you can take with you is souls. So the purpose of the anointing is to make us soul winners. The fire comes upon us to do what? To advance the kingdom more. And anything that stands in the way of that is evil. Anything that wants to hurt you is evil. God wants to come. He'll come like an assassin in the night. I'm telling you, the circumstances he arranges, and I'm prophesying right now, will come to absolutely annihilate and destroy the wicked. If you don't like that, you don't like God. If you don't like that, you don't understand how stupid it is to let evil stand. Oh, just let me just leave it alone, look the other way, and you know, I'm not that kind, of, I don't have that kind of personality, or, or you know, God is merciful. To who? To who? To evildoers, to devils, to murderers? Are you stupid to think like that? I, rebu I want to rebuke the heads off people. I don't mean your head should, your head should stay on and you begin to think better, is really what I'm after. Something, well, it was supposed to be nice. Nice is in the Bible? It's the, the word's not there. Nice is in France. Nice, they call it Nice in the south of France. Nice is on the cookie box. Nice cookies. Nice, 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 nice. Not in the Bible. Not in the Bible. It's not a biblical, it's not a biblical uh, thought. It's righteous or wicked. It's wise or foolish, according to Solomon. It's good or evil. It's God's purpose filled or it's a carnal agenda or a demonic agenda working in people and through people. Which do you want? We have to choose God. Someone's going to say, I choose God, I choose His will, you know. It doesn't mean a thing if you don't do anything with it. Like, oh, I chose and I have the mindset and I'll cry tears. Oh God, we want your plan and we want your purpose. Nice. Dry your tears and stand up and walk and do something. No one's impressed with your emotions and your, what they call godly emotions or sentimental, sentimental or emotions. I'm going to cry. Oh, 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 God, oh, God. God says, oh, God, oh, God, here I am. You call me. Well, I'm here. What do you want to... What do you want me to do? What do you want to do for me? What are we going to do? Let's, what are you going to get up and get busy? Faith without works is dead. Don't ever forget it. Faith without action is dead. Don't ever forget it. If you don't do nothing, you didn't do anything. If you don't do anything, you didn't do anything. I said the same, it's like I'm saying the same thing in two different ways in the same sentence, but I, I think you can understand that. If you didn't do anything, nothing got done, you get no reward, you're not to be commended, you're to be actually admonished and told to do something. I was making an analogy. Some people will leave things a mess for a decade. They'll never fix it. What's wrong with them if they don't look at something say, that's not supposed to be like that. Then you want to get people that are engaged that you want to help. Then you have to take someone that's committed and really cares. And then you're looking for people all the time that would really care. It's hard to find. Somebody says, oh, this person's good. And you talk to them and you think, wait, wait a minute. How, how, how am I going to inconvenience myself to get so involved with them? I don't even know them. To find good people that are really committed to the thing is, is hard. That people just look at stuff. They're too afraid to say anything. They don't want to raise their voice. They don't want to say nothing. What is wrong with you if you're like that? You got, you got a touch of idiocy. If it came from your grandmother, slap your grandmother, even if she's in the grave. Go to the grave and kick the thing over and kick rocks on it. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, I, I'm talking really, really rough here, but break that thing in Jesus' name. So anything that made me stupid and to untoward and intimidated and fearful and nervous, I rebuke it. Get it out of me and get it out of my bloodline. No one ever talked no one ever talked to you like this. Nobody. I know. Nobody. Nobody on the face of the earth ever talked to you like this. I, I'm aware. I'm aware. Nobody ever talked to you like this. No pastor had any cojones or testosterone or, or adrenaline or I don't know what you'd call it spiritual fortitude to tell you anything like that 
The guy gets up on the platform. God's got to give me a miracle. Breakthrough. Hey, you're the one that wants to break through. The guy preaching. He wants your money or he wants something. <clears throat> Let's build something. You know, Let's have the kind of emotional dance and song show. And a friend of mine is called the side shows or whatever. All this stuff they call And it's all this semantics. And uh, that's my church. And, uh, do they teach you how to be a warrior? Do they teach you how to rise up and be different? Do they change your mindset for the better to think the way that God thinks, like the ways I'm talking to you? God thinks like that. He thinks about... He, let me tell you something right now. Exodus 15, 3, I think it is. The Lord, 2 or 3. I haven't said this in a long time. It's just coming real strong right now. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord of hosts is his name. And I think the word there is Sabaoth. Jehovah, Jehovah Sabaoth. S-A-B-B-A-O-T-H. The Lord is a man of war. He's the God of war. He's a warrior. He's the commander of the armies. How did he send an angel? An angel stretched out his hand. And then 185, were they Assyrians? I think it was the Assyrian army, if I'm correct on that. And they all fell dead. 185,000 men fell dead. And then David annoyed God, and God sent an angel. You see that in 2 Samuel 24, I think. He, he said, I, I can't give God some, anything that doesn't cost me something. Please, Lord, stay this plague. Let me, let me avert it. I'm sorry. And, he, and, he, and it says he, he got an offering of silver that was worth like $6,400 in today's money. $6,000 is about uh, 700,000 Kenyan shillings, if you want to look at it in Kenyan money. 700,000. Let me stack it on the table. That's not, a, it's not so much money, but something. Then he had all the other people pray. You see the whole scenario. Part of it is in 2 Samuel 24, 25. The, the end of this 24th chapter of 2 Samuel. But the whole thing plays out there about how uh, David did something God didn't want. And, he, and the Lord sent an angel of judgment. And David had to wrestle with the whole thing to try to get it to change. So he was a warrior, basically. I can make that point. He was a warrior. To want to uh, deal with that, get that done, get that fixed. He didn't lay down and cry. He stood up like a real man and did something about it. The need for real leaders and real men is, is uh, an over... It's an understatement to say that we need them right now. We more than need them. Sometimes, you know, this is a bit annoying. It's a bit irritating for me to speak about this because the need is so great. I feel, ugh, I'm saying that like, yeah, because I see so many people, they're not like that. And my aim in this message to teaching, teaching this is to give people a mindset. Get the mind of God. Think like God. Deal with stuff that needs to be dealt with. Say amen. Sitting there back, do nothing. Months go by, you didn't do a thing. What's wrong with you? I want to rebuke everybody, even myself. What's wrong with us? We don't do more. You know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm done. Like, do you even hear the sentiment of people, the emotions of people? Like, oh, yeah, yeah talk, 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 talk. I don't know. The last few days, I, I, got, I have another advanced level of discernment or of mentality, like that, that certain things bore me. I'm bored with them. You know, I'm, like, like, I'm not impressed. I look at things in such a, a high level of, of discernment. I see right through everything. I want to see a result of something good. I don't care at all about just thinking about, well, you know, you think like this or you say this or whatever. I don't care. It's meaningless. What is it producing? Even you look at people and you go, yeah, they come saying something and then you see that that's not even real. Or, and you're just like, 
I don't, I don't give any credibility. Uh, I don't attribute any credibility to them. Until they prove themselves by tangible action. Come on now, say amen. Ah, I can breathe now. I think I, I think I, isn't it sad? I'm, I'm going to have this edited where I'll make a version of this video where there'll be like, I'll cut those uh, things out. And the cold air is still blowing in the dust, but I feel like, I'm going to not say it too quickly. The Lord is serious. Some things need to be just wiped off the map. Some people need to really do a lot to prove themselves. Not to prove themselves for the sake of proving themselves, but for the purpose of getting something done. Now they can be commended and rewarded. Faith without works is dead. The Lord is a man of war. He's not a man that smiles at evil. Powerful what I'm saying. Doctrine. Doctrine. D-O-C. Doc. T-R-I-N-E. Wimpy pastors. I think the churches, some of the, a lot of the churches have gone off the deep end. Some of them are like woke or feminine or they just, I don't know what they are. They're trying to be politically correct or culturally correct, religiously correct, whatever they don't want. Deal with issues. This one guy is a very famous preacher. He's really in his lane. And I commend him for that. And I don't expect him to talk about spiritual warfare and all that because he's really in his thing about out positive outlook on things, power positive thinking, positive confession. He's really got that thing and nobody can knock him for that because he's really mastered that lane that he's running on that lane. I commend him. I applaud him for that. I don't expect him to come out and be a prophetic warrior because that's just not his thing. So we leave him alone in that lane. And he's been, he's done his part very successfully. You may even guess what I'm talking about. And I, li I like him personally. I think he's good. People want to criticize him over this and that. I don't know what to say or his other things, you know, I don't know. But the one thing he does that's positive, that's helping people, I commend him for that. And he's, very, he's obviously very successful at it because millions of people are following his ways. But some preachers, you know, they, they, they never want to get in the, in the realm of this, what would seem like a contentious or controversial thing to deal with evil and evildoers. I don't know what it is about me, why God made me like this. I have zero compassion and mercy for an evildoer. Zero. Don't know why. Maybe it could be different. I don't know. But the things people have done, it's like it's almost like you expect it. God's judgment must fall. That thing needs to be rectified. They can't get away with what they've done. Yes, they need to be punished, but also whatever effect they had has to be nullified. And then also the damage that evildoers have done already, you can't repair that. You can't get it back. It's too unfortunate. And then another thing, another level to really push the envelope further, when people get judged or whatever, they have judgment coming, it's because they chose that path. Look at me, do I hurt anybody? I can't. It's not in my nature. I have no agenda for that. Manipulate, undermine, deceive, or kill people or hurt them. Why? Why would I do that? For what reason? What would I benefit from that? Nothing. And I know it's it's you you're like you're like an it's like an antichrist thing. It's like a satanic. It's like a, a an evil agenda, an evil. But some people go that way. They really are like that. They're like the devil incarnate. 
sad to say some are in the church. Or the, or they say he's the church. Jesus says, I don't. But Jesus, Jesus is brilliant. He's God. He says, I don't know you. Depart from me. He didn't say, hit. now this is doctrinal again now, because I'm proving what I'm saying, this whole thing by that one scripture in Matthew 7. He didn't say, you sinned, you messed up, I forgive you, it's okay. Hakuna matata, hakuna shida, no problemo, it's cool, don't worry about it, no problem, and uh, no problem, man. Uh, don't worry, be happy, and, and, and it's just okay. No, he didn't say that. He said, depart from me, you're not going to be with me because you're an evildoer. You're a worker of iniquity. God doesn't tolerate it. Let me tell you, doctrinal, I'm teaching as a, as a, as a, as a, a voice on the edge, as a general of God in the kingdom. I'm telling you right now. God doesn't tolerate it. Not going to tolerate it. He never did, he never will. He never did, he's not now, and he never will. Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. Forever. Amen. He never, he never wanted it. He never tolerated it. He's not now and he never will. But a lot of people, they've kept that all hidden. They don't want to deal with that. They don't want to talk about it. As I've said before, the scripture that I saw, I just, my eyes fell upon it by revelation, by the, by the direction of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and by his spirit, I saw this. Isaiah 41, 10 to uh, 14. 10 to 12, especially. Fear not, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do not be afraid. You know, I, the Lord, will protect you and keep you. We People marvel at that. And then they jump, oh, they skip 11, and they go to 12, and they say the rest of it. But they never want to say... Those that hate you will be ashamed and disgraced. They don't want to speak that. Those who are against you, want to hurt you and hate you, they will themselves be ashamed and disgraced, and they will even become as nothing, and you'll look for them and not even find them again. And then in the next level, now it steps up or not, take it up to the next level. If they strive with you, meaning if they continue to fight you, they want to hurt you, they want to carry on, They've engaged you to destroy you. God said, those ones will even perish. Perish means two things. Number one, it means to slowly waste away and drop off. That happens to some. It happens to some in that way. It's ha it has happened to many. I could tell you names. I could tell you faces and places. They just begin to decline and it was the judgment of God. They're perishing. But then the perish factor, like says, says, they perished in the fire. They perished in the accident. They per perish means they, they, they died quickly. So it means, per the word perish literally means two things. Slowly or, of course, boom, it happens. <clears throat> what part of that don't we understand? And people in the church, man, they don't want to say that verse. They use... Let me tell you how many times you can go back and see sermons. Isaiah 41.10, Isaiah 41.12. And they all skip verse 11. They don't read it. Even in the Bible, uh, uh, collections of scriptures that you'll hear on audio, they'll use that. Fear not, I will withhold, uphold you. They'll never say the 11th verse. I, I, can, I can go through them all and they won't do it. Why? They're scared scared to say that. Oh, that seems rude. That's too forward. That's too avant-garde. That's too rough. That's too warrior. That's too cruel. That's too harsh. All of these words people use. So what do you want to do? Let the devil harsh on you? Cruel on you? Kill you? Destroy you? That's foolishness. Good preaching here, my brother, my dear prophet. Good preaching, good teaching. Oh my, 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 my. Raste leka sika dalande bosea. Cobra stelamande.
For these things you're doing in our midst in these days, Lord, where you're bringing a recompense, a reward, even a righteous judgment to the evildoers, and you're causing a realm of, 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 of annihilation to the forces of evil that the righteous can flourish and live. That's part of what I just said in tongues. And the Lord is bringing it forth in this day very forcefully, very strongly, very fiercely. And it's happening now in our day. Some people won't last. Even past this year. Some things won't last even past this month that we're in right now. The Lord is reckon, reckoning with things so strong. Revival, reformation, and revolution. There's a, uh, a guy that was invited to speak, and he used those terminology, and I thought, I, I said that from a decade ago, more than that. I've been talking about this for years and years and years. Revival is a, a giving of life. Reformation is changing it for the better. New system, new developments. And revolution is when you overturn the whole order of something the way it was and make something new for the better, for the better. Re See, revolution in historical term, terms could be deemed as, deemed as evil. A revolution came to change the existing order and bring it the way of, for someone else's agenda. That has happened. But spiritual revolution, as far as in the kingdom of God, that's always a good thing. And we need more of that. We need more of that. So even in the civil government, civil government, some presidents can't do all they'd like to do. And I wish sometimes they'd have a little bit more leeway to get more things done if you can trust the person because the bible says also don't trust people do. some people they, they're proving their character and their heart to want to do good but one place we can really flow in that is in the kingdom of god how much question how much do you want to see evil overturned if you don't care you're not a profitable servant That's a powerful statement. If you don't care, you're not a profitable servant. Profitable means to profit, to advance, to increase, to bless. So many people, they might have some blessing in some area, but there's something in another area that's very hindered because of evil, because of evil people. Because it are evil operations. And I prophesy right now the fire of God is coming upon evildoers. Those that ever said anything against me or did anything against me, God is judging them. What it got, whoever spoken even done evil things against you, God will judge them. And you have to rise up and say, Lord, I take it, I believe it, I accept this. It's doctrinal. It's a position of scripture. It's not being vicious or evil or cruel. Definitely not evil, harsh or cruel or callous or uncaring. Forget about all that. Let God, let God deal with what he wants to deal with. And I'm telling you, as his prophet right now, he's dealing with evils. And some of them will become as nothing. There'll be no more. Say amen. And, and those that stro strove to, strove? Is it a, a past tense of strive? If I could make a word, if those that strive with us or have strived with us or continue to strive with us in an evil way, they will be cut down and those will even perish. God's, I heard this statement so strongly as a premise, a little foundational statement of this message. 
God's judgment can devise arrangements that will even act as an assassin against evil and evildoers. Father, so be it in Jesus' name. My God, I've shared a few things here. We'll continue with this as the Lord directs when he does. And know this, that uh, God is on our side. And people that have meant us no good, they're not on his side. They're not on our side. They're not on his side. And they're going to be reckoned with. Even snuffed out. Off the scene. Out of the way. Through, through how, you'd say. You'd ask, how? Don't know. The mysteries of God. God's arrangements, as I said, this is, thus saith the Lord, this is a statement from the Holy Ghost. It's a heavenly statement here. I'm delivering on the earth. And it will, it will come to pass because his prophet here is speaking it. Amos 3, 7, again, we know that as a foundational scripture of the, about, about the office of the prophet, he will do nothing unless he first reveal his secret to his servant, the prophet, and the prophet then speaks. And then people then echo the prophecy, verse 8. Who then can but prophesy? In other words, e e echo what the prophet said. It has to be spoken. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my strength and my high tower. <laughs> a servant of God was saying, you can't have it as a thought or as a good intention or a good thought in your mind. You have to speak it. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my strength, my strength, my high tower, my God in whom I'll trust. The Psalm 91, yeah? He said, some things need to be spoken. This need that I'm saying, it needs to be spoken. God's judgment will create arrangements of things mysteriously and su supernaturally beyond the hands of man that will act as an assassin to evildoers. They did it. They staked. They sowed the wind, they'll reap the whirlwind. The scripture says that. Let's, let me admonish everybody. Let's get the Bible in our heads and hearts. What the Bible says about things. Let's begin to think as God thinks. What he said. Let us love his word and believe his word and take his truth as doctrine. John A. 31, so well, so well said so aptly said, so wonderfully said, so beautifully said, you will continue in my word, and as you do, then you are my disciples indeed. John 8, 32 says, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. This is truth. How many scriptures are in scripture? How many verses are in the Bible that tell this story about God dealing with evil? Almost count. You can count how many. Maybe is it a thousand verses? Is it more? Is it a thousand times he said it in the scripture? Is it a thousand? It's definitely hundreds. Hundreds of times. That's not something to overlook. 331 times a study was done. Somebody studied. 331 times talked about your decisions determine your destiny. You decide to do things. You make decisions about things. You take on a course of action and it will produce for you. But the, the, the course of action you've gone on, part of that, 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 that's a big part of the doctrinal way of doing things that we need to deal with things. Make decisions for them to change. We change, we move, we, t we step forward. We decide to do things, we take the risk. All these business people that ever became rich, they talk about risk. <laughs> Well, the risk factor. There's a risk factor to everything positive. You got to step out and do something. Rasta molengila ai tu makande mabaranderezo. You got to step out. Karabrandela. You got to step out. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord of hosts is his name. Lord of hosts. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord God of the armies. I'll be like a nursing mother crying after her children. After. 
Rachel weeping for her children that were not anymore and couldn't be comforted, tormented, stirred up, in a violent rage, couldn't be comforted or calmed down. Someone says, oh, just calm down, just relax, you know, just overlook it. That's how it is around here, and that's what people do. If you say that, you're a proponent of evil. You're a messenger. If you say that, anybody that says that in a society is a messenger of evil. They're a messenger of the devil. They're a, con they're a continuation, a continuity of the evil that's being done. They're not a changer of it. They're not an avenger of it. They're not a, a person that's going to bring the solution that needs to be brought. Are you seeing that? Can you see that? So stop doing it. You're offending God. You think, oh, I'm just being nice. What does ni nice mean? Remember that song by Tina Turner? It sounds rude. What's love got to do with it? I thought, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a connection. It's a business arrangement. It's a fellowship, a thing together. You know, what is love? What's this thing about love? Another guy sang a song. What is love? Please don't hurt me. Hurt me no more. What is love? Love the emotion that messes with your emotions. You know that people in the world even made songs about this to explain this issue. Sometimes things is pure business. Sometimes things are pure business. Get the emotions out of the way. Get your fear out of the way. Get your apprehension out of the way. Say amen. This is powerful. Get on with the program that God has. Be an avenger of evil. Be a destroyer of darkness. Be a light bearer that cancels out the darkness. Say amen. Warriors arise. Nobody. I, I don't know. I don't know. Almost anybody hardly is talking about this. I, I know there are some. I'm sure there are. Even some that I may not be aware of. I hope, I hope more and more. But we need to catch that nature of the warrior. Anything that's wrong, look at it and change it. Don't accept it. Look into things of people's agenda and see it and don't embrace it. Someone that's evil and off and they cause you pain and damage, there's some sign of that somewhere. You've seen it. Act accordingly and snuff them because clip, snip them off and clip, clip it off and get rid of it. I wish I had always done that all my life. Some horrible things that I've experienced I wouldn't have experienced. And don't you always wish that you can go back and relive it and fix it, but you can't. You can't change the past. The Lord spoke to me the other day, I was somewhere, and I was in a beautiful place, yeah, a week ago or two. And I, and I heard this thought, and I heard it again the other day, this last week. It just was so strong to me, it says, the Lord said, you can't change anything about yesterday. He said it again to me a couple days ago here. You can only deal with from today onward. Like this moment onward, right now, that's the only thing you can deal with. Yesterday is in the tomb. Tomorrow's in the womb. Today is the day of action that produces our tomorrow. And there really is no future. Only faith is now. I'm going to say something profound here. Because when you get to the future, you'll rename it today. You'll be at the future, and then you'll call it today. Tomorrow, the tomorrow that's the future, when you get there, you'll call it today. So was it, is it still the future? No, it changes into the today. So all this thing about, you know, I hope for the future, hope for a better tomorrow, maybe one day. To, after a while, you're going to wake up. It's good when you wake up. It's very painful to get revelation of light. Light comes to you, and now all of a sudden you're looking at things like, I got to deal with all this stuff. I got to destroy these, these evils. I, 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 God, you, you have to work on my behalf. Things need to change for the better. I, I, I mean, things need to get, we need to get on with the program. How much time do you think you have on the earth? Especially now we're in the last days, but even in your own life, how much time do you think you have? Look at me right now. I shouldn't be here at this time of day to, there's like a rum of cold air coming over the top of this thing where I am. It's coming right down on top of my head because the weather is so bad here. 
and I think by breathing and speaking, I <coughs> expelled some of the irritation and dust that was in my lungs from just being around in the pollution area outside. I look at myself, I look different. I lost a lot of weight. Gee, my pants are falling off. I have to tie them tighter, my track suit. Or somebody was telling me, you look, you look so much younger, you look great, you lost so much weight, you look amazing. And you're like, you, you need another set of clothes because you lost so much. And I did that by activity. I was exercising every day, swimming, running, walking, in the gym, in these beautiful places and eating vegetables and salad and soup and fruits every meal. For a whole month, I didn't touch one piece of fried food. I don't eat fried food. I don't like it. I opt not to have it. If I have it, it's like, how did it get in there? I just had a piece of cake sitting there. That's all they have here in this stupid place. I'm telling you, some places are really down as far as their level of service. They don't have any... I ate this piece of cake and then I realized how much oil was in it and sugar and all that. The ingredients it tastes nice, but we need to make things not like that. You know, I found a way you can make gluten-free bread. You can put your own uh, sweet, uh, sweetener in it. That's not the artificial stuff, but like the monk fruit that I use that comes from a plant in Asia that replaces sugar. Make cakes with that, less oil. You can even make eggless cakes. Not that eggs are so bad being in something, but you know, less oil, more healthy ingredients and make stuff. There's ways to make it taste right. There's things you could eat, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, freshly grown, organic, fresh stuff, fresh, uh, uh, if it's meat or whatever, and have that thing. And it's done well at, by excellent chefs. That's the way to live. You do that, you, you'll lose weight. Drinking so much more water, too. You need to drink a lot of water, man. Some environments, you have to really push yourself. I keep like four bottles of these around me. I got one, another one, then I got the big 20-liter thing that you fill it up with, and I keep filling them up, and I keep forcing myself. I've done that. I start, I'm doing that more lately. It even helps you to lose weight. It flushes out the toxins in the body. It's very good. I look at some people that look very unhealthy, and they don't even take a, they don't even take a water. They're eating fried food. You see people that cut, frequent these kind of places that I'm around a bit here. Horrible. Some restaurant chains, they make absolute rubbish junk. People go and eat that. Then you see that their hips are like three times the size of what they should, and they're carrying all this weight, and they look unhealthy. And of the eventual reality of that, I look very young. You look at me, me how I look like a young man. I do. But if I tell you my, the number of my, my days, you'd be like, this is a mystery. <laughs> but if I see one wrinkle coming, I get really like a little flipped out about it because I have some pictures where he, my skin was totally pulled tight. Like there's not a wrinkle or a blemish anywhere. Still like that, but you know, you, you see one line or two as you go. But uh, <clears throat> I take so many supplements, I work on myself. It's all an action thing, everything about life is action. And the Lord said to me, like, you know, I was asking the Lord, why do bad things happen to good people? And, and look at evildoers, how they do. And look at people that don't do enough of what they should do. The Lord said to me, the other day, he said to me, people could do what they want. I gave man the free will, free moral agency to do whatever they want. They could do whatever they want. If they do good, good. If they do evil, they do, they're going to pay for that. They do good, they'll, they'll get blessed somehow. You want to move forward in your, your operations and all that? Take action? you got to take action. And the Lord's not going to come down off his throne and walk up to you and slap you in the head and say, go do it. you got to get the revelation and figure it out. i got to go do it. By the way, every teaching I do is great, but this is, this is great, uh, isn't it? Isn't it? My Lord. This is great. Action against evil. Action for righteousness. Action on the purpose. Action on the plan that God has. Prosperity on purpose. Why? Because you got it in your mind to prosper. And, and you, you believe it and you receive it and you work it in the word. And then it begins to manifest in your life. And you know it's not an option. 
And then certain things that people do, they just, they just go along with everything. Oh, that's what they said. That's what they, and one day you rise up and say, no, it's not going to be like that. It has to change. It's not just has to stop. No more delays. How much time do you think we have anyway? How much time do you think we have to get everything done? How much time do you think we have? Do you think we have forever? Is time infinite? In eternity it is, but that's only when we step over to the other side, not now. Not now. The people, kids in their 20s and 30s, they, they, you know, they think they have all the time in the world. Maybe somehow they might. But other people, when you get on a few years in your life and the numbers start to go, you, you got to get the revelation and say, look, I better get busy. Now, here's this thing about, I got to go back to this thing about, in Jesus' name, get busy, all right? I got to go back to this thing about looking at things and not thinking you need to change everything. You need to change everything. If you don't have that progressive touch, I don't know what happened to you. I'm sorry, I don't know where is God. I don't know where he is. And there are people that are very godly, very pious, very holy, but they don't get results in changing things because they don't change anything. I really wish to God that some people really would catch a hold of that and start to change everything for the better. Not everybody has to be like a raving maniac, an A-lister, uh, with the strong dominant gift to be dominant in situations, but uh, you, you do need to get aggressive. Say amen. God is like that. Why aren't we like that? Something's wrong. There's a disconnect somewhere. It's in the culture. It's in your upbringing. It's in your crazy lineage. Even from some unlearned, backward church experience, life, church life, whatever. Well, they never wanted to deal strongly with things. All these protocols of niceties and politeness and what on earth does that get done? Nothing. Stupid religion will damnation. Religion, religiosity and poverty always go together. Because people don't have their progressive reality like, I'm a warrior, I have to prosper, I'm going to be rich, I got things to do. Instead of like looking and spiritualizing everything. Oh, you know, it didn't work out. I guess the Lord didn't want it to happen. That's the stupidest thing anybody ever said. God doesn't, didn't want it to happen. Prove it from his word to me. You can't. He wanted it to happen. He ordained it to happen. He was expecting it to happen. And men short-circuited it and maybe even you. Because you didn't do anything about it. You didn't expect, you didn't believe, you didn't want to change it. Well, you know, it just didn't work out, so I guess the Lord wasn't in it. He was in it. He expected it to succeed. He said in Isaiah 55, 11, my word goes forth and it's, it should prosper in the thing I sent it to do and not return to me void. It must su cause success for what I want to happen. It needs to, that thing needs to happen. That's what God said. That's what he did. And he said in Isaiah 40, uh, Psalm 84, 11, Psalm 84, 11, he said, I'll withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly. Isaiah 48, 17, I wanted to go there too. I, I am the Lord your God that teaches you to profit. You're not profiting? What are you doing? The same way five years ago as you are now. The same now as you were five years ago. Is that right? Well, I just have this way, and we're just doing this, and this is how it is. Uh, you let it be like that. I'm really, on a, I'm really on a wave here, aren't I? Let me get off this thing and get out of here. Jesus, I'll pick this up later. Father, thank you for the, for the aggressive mentality. You're giving it to people. And Lord, you are acting as an assassin to evil and evildoers in this day. I prophesy. I prophesy, I prophesy it, I declare it by the Holy Ghost. This is not my, I, I like this kind of wave of thinking because it's in me because God put it in me. So I enjoy talking about, I enjoy talking about everything he gives me to talk about. But, but I'm the messenger. This is the message of the boss.
My judgment, says the Lord, will create arrangements, I'll create arrangements that will even act as an assassin against evil and evildoers. I'm glad I said it like seven times. I'll say it an eighth time. The Lord says, the Lord says, my judgment against evildoers will create, I'll create arrangements and situations and circumstances that will even act as an assassin against evil and evildoers. That's thus saith the Lord. You want to see evil cut off in your life? Sow a seed into this grace right now. There's different outpourings of the spirit and, and realms of the anointing that flows in, in each individual message. I won't do this tomorrow like I'm doing it today. This is every, every time it's a one-off. Next one is a continuation, but it's a different thing. Could be a continuation, could be a, an entirely different thing. There's a right now moment, there's an anointing here flowing right now for the purpose of God destroying every evil, evil yoke in your life, every evil problem. God's going to be like an assassin against your enemies. Thus saith the Lord. Sow a seed for that. Sow into this grace. I heard a man of God say, there's no revivalist that was ever a stingy person. There's no greatly used person that was ever, ever a stingy person. Givers uh, receive a lot from God because they're open. They have that open communication. They're giving and receiving, giving and receiving. The anointing flows like that. Your money flows like that. Your gen generous, a generous giver will always be a uh, a recipient of the blessings of God. Let me tell you somebody God will never leave alone to suffer or to, to perish or to have a problem if they're righteous. A giver. A generous person. A hungry person for the anointing. You hunger and thirst after righteousness, you'll be filled. A giver. A soul winner. A kingdom promoter. God will never leave you barren. He will never leave you comfortless. He'll never leave you without help. He'll always back you up. He'll always come to bless those that are doing those things. The person with an aggressive mindset like the Lord has, and you take it on and say, we got to deal with all these things. We got to at least be proponents to speak it out and to prophesy according to his will and declare it so that it will happen God said, I'm honored by that. I am honored by that. And I will honor you for honoring me and my way of thinking and my mode of operation. And whatever I do to destroy evil, it's good. Let's say one more thing. God's judgment is never just for the purpose of destruction, it's, but it is always for the purpose of redemption. Because you get evil out of the way, Things get redeemed, things get fixed, things get blessed, progress happens. Free flow. I remember the times we've seen revivals. Great outpourings of the Spirit. It's like there's no tomorrow. Everybody's getting blessed. Multitudes are coming. Miracles are happening. And then all of a sudden, here comes the enemy behind, who's watching from the sidelines. Jealous, hurtful, hateful. Total scum, total trash that they are. Even bishops, even preachers. I'm telling you. Even people that were involved in the revival, even sometimes host pastors of a movement, of a thing that came, and they want to twist it and mess it up, and the Lord gets grieved and leaves. It's horrible. But at first it was like there's so much, what the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. I was thinking today, and I was really feeling emotional about it, about a move of God that we had in a certain city, and so many people were blessed. It was like this. It's like everything was like an, a, a utopian, a heavenly realm, absolute paradise, absolute glory. Everything was working well. It was, and prosperity comes in revival. There's never a lack of money where the spirit of the Lord is being poured out. Oh, and it just flows like that. And you want to sow for that. You want to sow like, Lord, I, I need this realm of revival in my life, in my world. That everything... I want to do gets done and the money will come there'll be prosperity because where the spirit of the lord is there's liberation there's great realms of blessing that come from god where he's moving where people allow him to move i'm telling you 
and then the, and then the attack comes. They want to destroy it all. And those that did it, these are the ones that God is looking to wipe out. And it's happening. Even today, as I alluded to before. Now, I'm glad I had the grace to really, uh, I got fixed along the way here to speak, uh, get this whole thing out, or else I was going to stop quite some time ago. Thank God I'm able to flow here and just get all this recorded here in this thing. And uh, we'll even put this in print. The Lord is, is amazing. And he's dealing with enemies. Say amen. It's serious. The Lord said to me, and I'd say, thus saith the Lord. I'm quoting him, Jehovah, directly. He said this to me. My judgment will bring about arrangements that even act as an assassin against evil and evildoers. That's thus saith the Lord. You can partner with this grace. You can sow into this anointing that God will deal with your adversaries like he's dealing with mine and others. And your life will never be the same again. Your life will become more of a blessed place. Mark my words, you'll see it. The ways to sow into this grace are into this anointing are on the heading of the title of the message and uh, utilize those and I'm praying for all things to be rectified now. That all good things come to us and every evil force that's ever stood in our way is getting crushed off the scene in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV, and of course I approve this message. Thank you, Lord, for the grace and the anointing to speak this. We'll continue as you direct. Be blessed, everyone. I love you. Thank you for partnering with me and getting blessed by doing so yourself. In Jesus' name, amen.